we're going to go to the top polling slide, and let's refresh our memories on what's most important, priority areas. Please introduce yourself, spokesperson of Team One. Hello, I'm Mike Peterson, and I'm speaking for uh, Table One. And, and our first priority may seem general, but we were we were insistent that you need to have an efficient multimodal transportation system throughout the entire region. Now, break that down to understand that in particular at our table, we had a lot of people who rely on transit, but we didn't want to say transit only. We understand this is about more than just transit. It's the multimodal picture and other transportation issues, particularly out here in Eastern Hillsboro. But the coverage throughout the area was the important part. So that was our goal, and to that end, one of the things that we believe, instead of reinventing the wheel, perhaps you ought to review the wheel first. And that is try to understand current plans and see if they are in fact sufficient for comprehensive, efficient, multimodal transportation throughout the region, and if so, then is in fact the problem only funded? And that's where we need to concentrate our efforts. Or is it, no, the plans aren't sufficient, and here's where they need to be modified to produce that system across the region that we want, and then speak to the funding issue. But that was sort of our two-part approach and test to how we think all this ought to move forward. With that in mind, when we discuss the meeting issues. Oh, we'll get there in a oh, second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, those are the two. Set us on the edge of our seats right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hear from Team One. Yeah. Any clarifications needed for Team One, or do you understand the uh, items three and four that belong to Team One? Good. All right, Team Two, who is your spokesperson? Please uh, come forward and share your top two ideas. Good evening, my name is Linda Washington, and I represent Team Two. And if you look down at number seven, that's our first suggestion, locate or fund research so that current traffic patterns and trip data can be evaluated to make decisions on transportation needs, including mass transit, location of current and future commuters, such as tourists, uh, work home to from destination, concentration can be done. And basically what this means is that we know that we're, we're looking at transportation, how we can make changes and improve. But we need to know where people commute from and to, you know, what type of trips do they make. You leave home every day. Do you go straight to one location? Probably not. You probably go to work, but after you leave work, you have to go pick up children. You may have to go by the store. So accounting for all of that footprint, all of that commuting time that you spend on the road, how can that be lessened with maybe um, mass transit or realizing what the needs of individuals are and what the uh, point A to point B may entail? So that's what we want to be able to be, uh, capture the um, total commute of a person, the total transportation needs of a person, where they're going to. And then the number eight, the second part of number eight where it says develop a second floor or lane for mass transit, future autonomous options, and or ride share to bypass traffic on street level or highway. Basically looking at how can we lessen um, the cars on the road by having different avenues, you know, in choosing how do you get around mass transit, whether it's ride sharing where it's more than just one individual in a car traveling along the highway, having um, futuristic cars, uh, you know, looking at the future of how you can have a rail on the side of the highway or have some type of mass transit that goes along with the current traffic, but it carries a lot more people. So being able to elevate the um, mass transit over the local traffic that will lessen um, cars on the road and, and also not interfere with um, the stop and go traffic and be able to move a little faster um, with new things with driverless cars, those type of um, thinking outside of the box of what we currently do to be able to improve the um, traffic that's on the road today. Let's hear for team two. 
So any questions on item seven or eight for team two? Any clarifications or you understand those? All right, team three, please uh, share. Hello, my name is Patrick Dolan, and I'm representing team three. Um, our two topics actually kind of slightly intermix. Um, the first one is talking about a rail system, and I know this is something that came up many years ago with the high-speed rail system from Orlando to Tampa. I know it got scrapped because of, because of flooding, and I don't know if it's ever been brought back up again. Um, there's lots of uh, ideas that are out there for that particular corridor. Um, that, of course, includes our region, the, uh, the Lakeland area, uh, Polk County all the way in to Tampa. Um, and then the second part, again, kind of piggybacks it slightly. Um, that was the, the longer commute rails. Um, we're talking on the next group of having um, either rail systems or bus systems that would bring in from small hubs, for instance. In this particular group, that would be the Riverview of Brandon um, that would have a bus service or a rail service that would bring uh, individuals into the West Shore area or into downtown Tampa, uh, into McDill, that would allow for people to get to work. It would take that many more people off the road, allow them to uh, come together and, and centralize hubs, if you will. Um, I'm from the Washington, D.C. area, and we have uh, park and ride lots. The buses will line up in the morning. Uh, you'll park, you'll get on the bus. Most of the buses are equipped for Wi-Fi, a restroom. So it's a very convenient commute for most of the individuals. Um, it makes for a nice ride. It makes for the individuals to be able to start work and be able to get things done um, while they're on the way to work or maybe take a nap. Um, it takes that many, many cars <coughs> off the road. Um, so that's an option that we're looking at for the future. That's here for team three. Any questions for clarifications on items one and two for team three? All right, team four, please come forward and share your top two. Hi, I'm Rich Clarendon uh, with team four. Um, George May and I uh, arm wrestled as to who was going to be spokesman. I lost <laughs> so standing up here today. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we actually, um, I think uh, we're attracted to uh, another team's um, idea here. I'm trying to find it. Um, number five, number six. Number six, thank you. Um, ferry service between the South Shore area to Tampa Bay areas, including McDill, St. Petersburg, and Clearwater areas. Um, we, we think that uh, particularly in the area uh, that we come from, the Brandon, Riverview area, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of commuters um, between that part of the county and we feel Air Force Base in particular. So that might have some potential. Um, the other idea that we talked about uh, is idea number nine, Beltway development, um, looking at uh, what areas are congested, um, considering you know where we have safety problems, uh, and um, finding ways to bypass those areas of congestion. Um, and maybe uh, alleviate um, you know, some of our bottleneck areas. Um, so those were the, the two ideas that uh, sort of floated at the top of our group. Let's hear it for team four. So those were uh, item six and item nine. Any questions for clarifications? All right, and team five, they, that was a high compliment to you that they selected one of your ideas. Uh, wasn't necessarily in my idea when I joined after the year. So I'll just put the point number uh, five, uh, outer eastern Tampa bypass, north south and limited access running between I 75, southern Hillsborough County, I 75, and southern middle Pasco County. Uh, I guess envisioning, if you will, uh, expanding the uh, wraparound of 275, similar to, uh, if I may dare to say, uh, the Atlanta, to uh, uh, that, that area where it totally encompasses the city and maybe uh, changing the designation of that uh, bypass <coughs> across the skyway, just going on the fly here. And then, of course, number six, uh, ferry service from the South Shore, Tampa, Tampa here, including McDill, St. Petersburg, Clearwater. Obviously, uh, uh, this was a, one of particular interest due to the waterway access down in that area. Growth is there, and more, of course, more cars you get off the road coming into Tampa from that area, of, uh, the less congestion there'll be. And those are our suggestions. All right, let's hear it for Very good, any questions for clarification for team five? All right, team six, please uh, come on down. 
Okay. Uh, my name is Andrew Stastny, and uh, number 10 uh, for Team 6, uh, number 10 we talked about the more frequency of public transit routes, uh, cut back on the size of the buses for smaller buses to save uh, overhead costs. It was an idea that instead of buying large buses and only having 10 or 15 people on the bus, why not have a smaller bus or a shuttle type that, uh, that Hart could use uh, to be able to fill that bus but not have as such high um, uh, cost. And then the, the other one we had was up on number two. It, it was kind of team three and team six collaboration. Uh, but talking about the regional hubs, we said in, uh, included in the conversation around the regional transit feasibility study. So we just wanted uh, to make sure that there is coordination between the Stanford Bay Next and between the regional transit feasibility study so that the, it, it's cross-referenced and folks are included and talked about it and making sure that we have good transit connections that connect the various uh, parts of the community. Um, I recently moved here from Phoenix, Arizona, and they built a light rail system there. And it cost about $1 billion, but then within five years, they had $2 billion of economic development built within a half mile of the light rail line. And it's a success because they, they took it through communities that uh, did not have public transportation, and they were able to uh, provide that access. So that's just my thought, uh, but that's kind of the idea we have with Team 6. Thank you. Let's hear from Team 6. Any questions for clarifications on item two or ten from T6? All right, what I think I will do next, oh, please. Well, I think on the, uh, for the public transit, uh, for the smaller buses overseas, they have this thing called Jitney buses. It's kind of similar to the airport limo. And if we did those at electric, they would be pretty low cost and get a lot better. And uh, you can run fewer big buses on major routes because Heartline doesn't seem to want to do anymore. And then just have these uh, take people from there to their, you know, find them on. All right, what I think I'll do now is read aloud the, the top 10 priorities that were submitted for the teams. And uh, in a moment, not quite yet, but in a moment we'll um, educate you on how to use these nifty little polling devices. Because what I'll ask you to do as I read them, after I read them, is to select your top three. What do you think of the top ten or your personal top three priorities? And Mike can give you polling devices if you don't have them. Just raise your hands and we'll be able to, to give additional polling devices. Um, the other thing I'll do is after I read them aloud, um, I'll ask if there are any other combination opportunities. You'll, you'll notice that we've already combined a couple of similar ideas, not so as not to split the vote, so to speak. Um, but this is just, it's not anything scientific. It's more to um, just get a pulse for the room. And we're not quite yet ready to use those polling devices. I'll, I'll educate you on how to use those. But at this point, I'll just read, read aloud the top 10 just so that we know what items uh, correspond with which numbers. So number one, rails connecting in Tampa to Orlando tie two cities together. That was given by Team 3, so that's number one. Uh, and again, the polls are not yet open. We're just reading through these to see um, if there are any combinations. Number two is creating a master plan for regional hubs to allow those on the outside town to come in and, and to come out and disperse within the town. That's from Team 3 and in combination with Team 6 included in the conversation around the regional transit feasibility study. So that's number two. Number three is review existing plans and make determination on whether or not they are realistic. Are, uh, are, are politicians ready to fund and or implement the plans? That's number three in team one. Then number four is efficient multimodal transit system throughout the region. That was contributed by team one. Then number five is Outer Eastern Tampa Bypass, north to south and limited access, running between I-75 in Southern Hillsborough County and I-75 in <coughs> Southern Middle Pasco County, serving the Brandon and Plant City. Uh, that was contributed by Team 5, and it's number five. Number six is the ferry service between South Shore area to Tampa Bay areas, including McDill, St. Petersburg, and Clearwater areas. That's number six, and that was contributed by Team 5. Number seven, locate or fund research so that current traffic patterns and trip data 
can be evaluated to make decisions on transportation needs, including mass transit, locations of current and future commuters, tourist uh, work, home, uh, to and from destination concentration. That, that is item seven, contributed by team two. Item eight, build overpass on future roads in regards to railroad crossings. Also should do this with existing roads at major road, uh, railroad crossings. That was by team five in combination with develop a second floor or lane for mass transit, future autonomous options and or ride share, HOV, to bypass traffic on street level or highway. That was contributed by team two. And that whole item was number eight. Number nine, beltway development. What areas of congestion, considerations of safety to bypass areas of congestion? That was contributed by team four, and that's number nine. Finally, number 10, which is more frequency of public transit routes, cut back on size of buses for smaller buses to save overhead costs. That's number 10 contributed by team six. So any other uh, combination opportunities? Or are we ready to launch our poll? So in a moment, uh, Mike will open up the polls and on your keypad, if you can do that, Mike, on your keypad, um, you have one through 10 and we want you to select three in order of priority. The one that you think is most important, press that number first, you'll see a green flicker of light, and then that, that means that your, uh, your poll has been registered. Then press your second priority second, and your third third. If anyone needs help with uh, doing your, your polling devices, we're here to help, so we'll give you a few moments to make your selections. <laughs> All right, so we will close the polls in three, two, one. So it looks like number two uh, came in as your top priority, which was 16%, creating a master plan for regional hubs to allow those on the outside town to come in and out uh, and disturb within and disperse within the town, included in the conversation around uh, regional transit feasibility study. So that was number two. And then the one that came in uh, second was actually number three at 13%. Number three is review existing plans and make determination on whether or not they are realistic. Are politicians ready to fund and or implement the plans? Then there was uh, energy around three others, all with 12%. Number four got 12%, efficient multimodal transit system throughout the region. Then it looks like number eight also got 12%. Build overpasses on future roads in regards to railroad crossings. Also should do this with uh, existing roads at major railroad crossings. 
develop that second floor or lane for mass transit, future autonomous options, and or ride share uh, to bypass traffic on street level on highway or highway. And then finally, number 10 also got 12%. More frequency of public transit routes, cut back on size of buses for smaller buses to save overhead costs. So those are your top, top five, I believe. Yeah. yeah, good job. Any other clarifications or uh, comments on those top five? Again, it was just to get a pulse in the room. All of them will be in the real-time record in addition to all the brainstorming that you did. So nothing gets lost, everything will remain in that real-time record. All right, I will invite team one, your spokesperson, to come up again and uh, share ways in which to organize. What are your top two? From team one, the, the first item we had was a need to improve the communication and outreach process to get some more people involved. And this is particularly important to our group because they represent a constituency of the visually and hearing, hearing impaired who don't always get the information as we might get it. And they also need to be able to, if we're gonna have interactive sessions, you have to understand it has to be workable for them as well. And so if we believe we ought to do all that, but we understand that, that may be a bit of a chore and we'd like to know how you might be able to accommodate such a thing. And the second item from us was, as tying on to what we said before, before we reinvent the wheel, we kind of like to hear from some of the plans what's already out there. And in particular, you may have heard that T. Barta, formerly was the Tampa Bay Area Regional Transportation Authority, became the Transit Authority. And so we're kind of interested in what is T. Barta's current vision for regional transit and maybe have one of our earlier meetings be hearing from them on what, what's their plan so we can see what is or isn't sufficient. And while we understand multimodal, we have a very strong transit need and influence on our team, and we'd like to hear where they're going with that. Thank they you. Have no power or anything. Well, Let's hear from we'll, we'll go with the FDO plan. Thank you very much. So items one and nine belong to team one. Thank you. T two. First item for T2 is up under number four. It's combined with T6. I'll just read, come to the community meetings that are already established and scheduled monthly. Instead of having a whole new meeting and ask, asking the community to come, this will guarantee more turnout, bring food, and smell like food. <laughs> <laughs> Work with uh, homeowners association and community groups to survey local residents, um, ideas for transportation needs, concerns to support working group meetings, such as provide feedback. One of the things that was suggested was maybe trying to get more people involved in these meetings. One thing was like have it at a, uh, a later time to maybe avoid some of the rush hour traffic, people getting off from work, trying to make it to a 5.30 meeting, have it a little later, or have it on the weekend, to, and you know, try to get more people to participate. But then that brought up the question of it, the more people that you have involved, the uh, harder it is to make decisions, come up with ideas, so maybe you know, like me being a president of an um, association for my community, representing my community, I come here and then I take back the information and share it with the community, get their feedback, get their buy-in, get their suggestions, and then bring it back to another working group. So this way you're, you're getting more participation, but maybe not necessarily the bodies within the smaller group, and you can accomplish more because I could bring back the information from my community um, in representing, you know, that community, share it with everyone, and then we work from there. So that's kind of what the gist was, being able to um, share with the masses and bring back into the smaller group. And then number 10 was being able to um, have meetings every month or every other month and combining virtual and face-to-face -face meetings. Trying to reach, again, the masses, whether it's social media, having surveys online, having, um, community letters go out from your uh, community group, your homeowners association, whatever, to be able to meet those masses and be able to share the web by having, you know, information on Facebook, information on other social media, um, and, or, and having a call meeting or something that you can share this information. So it's all about getting it out, getting the word out. Thank you. 
As you can see, we have you know, two topics. One that is looks like there's been several groups that touch on the same thing, which is the vir virtual meetings and live webinars. Uh, maybe as a supplement to the meetings that we have here. Uh, again, everybody that was 75 and Falkenberg try to get in here. Understand, it's not the easiest. Um, if you if you have other plans, uh, for instance, I coach a soccer team, it's not always feasible for me to be able to come out to the item to the meetings. So if I could even come back afterwards and watch what happened and transpired, to pull, still put my input in. Uh, maybe keep an open window for 24 hours after the time of the meeting to allow for input. Um, as some of you guys may or may not notice, you put a lot of information in. We only picked the top two items from your group. Um, but as I explained to me, the, the greater powers that be see all of the ideas. So all the information is there, the data stored, it goes on the web page. So having all the extra input from the people that may not be able to make it to the meetings is important. Um, somebody else might have a great idea that wasn't discussed here or any of the meetings that we can still get their input from. So we're looking for that kind of input that we don't have you know, tangibly in our, in our presence here tonight. Um, the other item was um, progress reports from FDOT um, as to how things are going, uh, what their ideas are for the, and the funding that goes into the projects. Um, for instance, if we see as, as individuals that massive amounts of funding are going into a project that we all know is not going to work because it's already outdated, um, input from us I think would be helpful for them. So. Items seven and eight for T3. T4. So uh, on the question of um, how frequently should we meet, uh, uh, we thought that once a quarter uh, would be enough, but with a specific agenda. So we're not just meeting to have meetings. Um, and uh, we could, we felt that it could be a little bit flexible in that uh, we could insert or add more meetings uh, if there are goals to be accomplished or as the needs arise. Uh, in terms of the setting, uh, we feel that face-to-face -face, uh, quarterly meetings are uh, more productive and you can kind of get a visual reaction to uh, the input you're receiving. And uh, if we need to go to monthly meetings, um, perhaps a, a virtual or webinar type meeting would be uh, appropriate. Um, as far as the format or structure is concerned, uh, we, we felt that the project focus uh, would generate the most interest and input. So team four was items five and six, and team five. I'm sorry. Where are we? Uh, number three, well actually number two, educate organizations and citizens on the overall process, including steps to solving transportation issues, funding phases and priorities. I think that kind of ties into what everyone else was talking about tonight. Uh, meeting summaries to attendees and interested parties the email after workshops and other transportation meetings. There were some uh, concerns today regarding the May 24th meeting when there was no adequate follow-up to allow folks to stay engaged. I'd also like to take a familiar term, I know some DOT folks have heard of, uh, when you're regarding uh, educating organizations, citizens, being transparent in plain language is a word we use where folks can understand. Translating the complicated uh, technical aspects of the plans and, and how they go about the process of building a road or developing a transportation idea plan and translate into a, a way we all would understand. And that's all. Okay, for uh, team six, our top one was number one, outreach to homegrown community, uh, civic organizations. Uh, and that also ties in with uh, Team One suggestion to need improve outreach to increase meeting participation, special notice system for visually and hearing impaired. Uh, the, the idea here, we, we want to make sure that there's more involvement uh, in the community because trying to say that this is for all of South and East Hillsboro and Polk County, uh, there's a lot more folks that should have their input in there. And, and there's some great ideas on here. 
Uh, and then the other uh, comment we have on uh, number four, uh, come to community meetings that are already established, such as civic or HOA or community groups, and they already have a scheduled monthly meeting, uh, do that instead of having uh, the whole, a whole new meeting and asking the community to come. Uh, that will give more turnout if it's an agenda item on a, on a meeting like that. And bring food, who doesn't like food? Uh, and then that teams up with the team two, work with the HOA and community groups to survey local resident ideas for transportation needs, concerns, to support working group meetings, and provide feedback. So again, we're, we're just saying it'd be good to have a, a meeting. If it, there's already monthly meetings out there, it'd be nice to be in, uh, have some involvement in those meetings so we have more feedback, more input. Thank you. Let's take the team six. All right. I'm going to read these again, and I have opened the polls. So uh, in the essence of time, if I read one that uh, you find to be very important, then you can press that number uh, as I read it if you like. So again, we're going to do top three in order of priority. Uh, number one, outreach to homegrown community and civic organizations. Need uh, improve outreach to increase meeting participation, special notice system for visually and hearing impaired. That's item one. Item two is educate organizations and citizens on the overall process, including steps to solving the transportation issues, funding, phases, priorities, etc. That's number two. Number three, meeting summaries to attendees or interested parties via email after workshops and other transportation meetings. That's number three. Number four, come to the community meetings that are already established and scheduled monthly instead of having a whole new meeting and asking the community to come. This will guarantee more turnout and bring food with the HOA and community groups to survey local residents' ideas for transportation needs, concerns to support working group meetings, uh, i.e. provide feedback. That's item four. Item five is once a quarter but specific agenda could add more meetings if goals are accomplished or as needs arise. Number six, setting face-to-face -face quarterly uh, if monthly meeting is needed, webinars, and the format would be, uh, the structure would be project focused. That's number six. Number seven, virtual meetings and live webinar. Number eight, process reports on what FDOT is doing with these ideas and the funding that goes into it. That's item eight. Item nine is review of Tibarda Regional Transit Plan. And finally, item 10, meeting every other month. This can combine with uh, virtual and face-to-face. -face. So those are your top 10. Please select top three in order of priority. Let us know if you need any help. which is educate organizations and citizens on the overall process, including steps to solving the transportation issues, funding phases, priorities. Number one squeaked in at 17%. That's your second item, which is outreach to homegrown community and civic organizations need to improve outreach to increase meeting participation, special notice for visually impairing and impaired. And it looks like uh, there's a tie between numbers four and number eight. Number four is come to the community meetings that are already established and scheduled monthly instead of having a whole new meeting to ask the community to come to. This will guarantee more turnout, bring food, work with the HOA and community groups to survey local residents for ideas on transportation needs, concerns to support working groups, meetings, i.e. feedback, provide feedback. Then finally, number eight came in as uh, your top four. Number eight, process reports on what FDOT is doing with these ideas and the funding that goes into it. So those are your top four ideas. Again, all of these ideas will be captured and this will help us to be able to plan meaningful ways in which to organize your work going forward. Give yourselves a hand.
so at this point, I'd like to open it up. Are there any public comments that we want to recognize? Looks like we have one or two. We'll invite you to come up, and I believe you have uh, just a few minutes. So uh, Karen, please come forward. Um, I'd just like to make a comment on most of us uh, come from like a metro uh, metro city and are aware and um, appreciate the great mass of transit options, whether it's New York City, Atlanta, and different. But when you come here, it doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. One is taxes. Nobody wants to increase taxes and pay for it. And the other is there's no control on development. Uh, mass transit is really the way to go. Yes, we will lose control and not have our car, but if mass transit is frequent and reliable, then you can schedule your life around it. If we stay with the car-centric way, right now there's 2.7 miles on Lithia Pinecrest and um, Bloomingdale that's gonna cost $100 million. There tomorrow, or it was today. It's Tuesday, Wednesday? It's Tuesday, sorry. On Thursday, there is going to be a comprehensive plan meeting that they're going to open up more agricultural land to convert to residential one. This is going to increase the traffic. So what's going to happen? $100 million for 2.7. We're going to need $100 million for the next 2.7 miles. It's in continuation. Do you understand that our local Hillsborough County mass transit budget is only $39 million? We get another $39 million from FDOT, right? And, or from the state. And so that doesn't even equal the $100 million to fix a $2.7 million screw up due to our county not being smart in development and our citizens not also protesting when we should. I mean, right here is an example of how many people should be at this meeting, but we're not because we prioritize our own life, yet the impact is going to be critical. The biggest impact, as we get more roads and more maps, it's going to be health care. You're going to have uh, um, asthma, you're going to have these, and it's going to affect the young, and it's going to affect the old. And maybe if you have money, you can afford health care, but what happens if you can't? Those are going to go down. And what is that impact going to be for Tampa? We're not going to be the great city. You know, who's going to come here? Is industry going to come here? Would you come here when there's not mass transit and you have to do a car and you're making your workers drive an hour to have a nice, beautiful house in Pasco, which Pasco says they're going to start building, so you're going to lose it there. Where are you going to end up going? So that's my point. Go to the comprehensive meeting on Thursday. And then we'd invite Christopher Gleason, please. Uh, thank you. I had to write it down because I'm kind of scattered there. Um, I have two points. First one is it's great that all you guys are here, but also you need to have your voice heard, not just not just here, but at the county level and the city level. Uh, stay informed. This is going to be a long process. Maybe uh, you're doing more next fall, and the final plan is not going to be January of 2019. Um, you need to get this done through community involvement, uh, talking to elected officials, uh, board and county commissioners, city councils, the MPO. The end plan is going to be a collaborative effort between FDOT and the MPO. If you don't know what the MPO is, Look it up, it's very important to meet our transportation needs. And the second point, um, the reason for the sad state of heart and our bus system is currently not lack of interest, but lack of certain county commissioners desire to properly fund it, even when the money's are already there. Thank you. All right, uh, if any of you didn't have a chance to leave a comment and you'd like to, there are comment cards on your way out. Feel free to uh, let your voice be heard that way as well. And then what website are you guys going to go to to check out all the information for tonight? TampaBayNext.com. And we so thank you for coming coming out. And uh, please. I'm sorry, just before you go, my name is Bill Jones with Florida Department of Transportation. Ed just opened up. Thank you, Ed. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. Um, you took time out of your lives to be here, so that's how important it is. So thank you so much. Um, some of the things you talked about, I just wanted to let you know we are um, very, very good discussions. We're fantastic. Um, some of the things that we heard were uh, presentations on transit, uh, how, how the process is done, those kind of things. We are going to start, do we have a date starting for those? September 8th. September the 8th, we're going to start rolling out, not only live, you're welcome, and we're, we're, we're looking to see how to set these up, possibly first at the department's office, but we're going to put it on a webinar. We're also going to have a podcast style, talk about how transit's funded, how it's set up, the different types of transit, for example. 
uh, how a project is presented, how it's put through the process, the program, the environmental impacts, the, the funding of those processes as well. So we're excited about that. It will be pushed out to you if you are on the email list. We'll push that out so you don't have to necessarily go to Tampa Bay next, of course, go there. We're going to push that out to you so you'll have that opportunity to join us on the webinar or later on a podcast. So we're looking forward to those helping us through the dialogue. Yes? So there's the website, the seminars, the meeting, or the, the podcast, what are the next steps? Perfect. Tomorrow we are getting together, taking your comments. Now that we've had uh, the fifth or sixth meeting now, we are going to actually meet tomorrow. We have a meeting on this. What's the next step? We've heard a lot. Actually, this is probably the most robust discussion on what we want to do with this next. And that was one of my comments is, actually team three, I think, brought it up about uh, transparency. Let's get, and I, I want the community to be part of our sausage making. All too often in the past, my opinion, the department, you know, we, we do our best as engineers or planners. We come to a 60% solution. Let's go talk to the community. Well, by then, the community at 5% could have given us information that maybe directed us in a better direction. So maybe phased implementation of things, um, rather than have a project soup to nuts 15 years in the process, maybe three, four year, years in, we could have pivoted and had a discussion. So we want to take those opportunities, see what's next, but get things done as well. At the next couple of meetings, we want to literally, what do we want to throw on the table together? So um, I don't know if we're going to ask for comments or take these and go with that, but tomorrow we're going to meet about the next step. Let's get some meat on, on the process moving forward. Uh, we're collaborating with Hart, with the county, the city, we hear you, we are, um, we're excited about where we can go with this region. Um, matter of fact, I've heard some people say we're so far behind on things that we have an opportunity to do it right in a lot of areas. So we want to take that opportunity. So thank you so much for that. Um, anything, yes ma'am? How do we get on the, mail, uh, the email list? Email They're on the sign-in sheet. If you're on the sign-in sheet. We, we, we can, can sign we you can up for that. If yeah, you, that would be nice. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Anybody else want to get on so we can push the information out to you? Of course, we have TampaBayNext.com. We have a Facebook page for it, Twitter account, but also we'll push this information. So if you don't mind, ma'am, we'll get you signed up outside. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anything else? Just kudos to the audience. Yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, yeah. 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 I'm glad you said that. Was it that yeah. Linda Washington? Yeah. Um, I'm glad you said that. Do you want to have an opportunity to talk through? I'm going to take a quick opportunity. I'm sorry, I had to thank you for that. Um, Anyway, I, I think we've captured uh, just about all of the ideas and the visual here. Um, over in the left, we started with the whole idea of the hub system, and we wanted to give a visual to that idea, that concept, you know, and I just playing around in my own RG idea, I, I thought, well, wouldn't it be great to live in Riverview and, and get on this hub system, you know, whatever it entails, bus, light rail, go to the beach, you know, I got Mickey Mouse here. What could, Mickey Mouse could live in Riverview. <laughs> Wouldn't have to live in Orlando and just uh, get on this hub system and, and, and get to work. Um, you know, build an overpass uh, over the future roads um, as regards to the railroad crossing. Uh, you know, looking at master plans, uh, revisiting existing plans, multimodal. Um, so you got all those ideas captured in the visual, and we're going to add color tonight and uh, just enhance it a little bit more. So, all right. check us out on TampaBayNext.com. It'll be full color as well as all of the fruit of your labor for this evening. Well done. Have a great. Oh, one more. One citizen had an announcement. Absolutely, please. Hello, I'm Karina Perez. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I'm doing petitions for LLC, and it's. Um, felons' right to vote, and it's for nonviolent crimes, and it's a real great petition. You guys um, can get with me after this meeting, and um, just help me put this on the ballot and help felons' right to vote. All right, thank you so much. Great.